how can you find your own voice? How can you tell your own story in a way that's unique to you and isn't just what everybody else does? Business of Architecture, episode 356. Today I speak with Brian McCartney, a branding and web design expert who helps AEC firms use branding and marketing to increase their visibility and influence so they can attract and win better clients and projects. On today's episode, you'll discover the difference between brand and branding, as well as Brian's opinion on what you should be thinking about when you market your architecture firm. Hello, Brian, and welcome to the Business of Architecture podcast. Thank you, Enoch. I'm really uh, pleased to be here. I'm happy to be on your show. So for you, let's just jump right in. What is what is branding? This is something you talk a lot about. Help our listeners understand what's your take on brand? Well, I think at its core, it really is, you know, the brand is a perception. It's not something that you can physically own or control. It's what other people think about you and uh, understand about you or your firm. So uh, when we talk about brand, we're really talking about that perception. Now, when we're talking about branding, that's something that's a little bit different and that's something that is within our control. Those are all the things that we can do to influence that perception that other people have about our, our business, our firms. And so, you know, when you talk about branding, what you're trying to do really is to create clarity and consistency uh, in the messaging that you're putting out there, uh, but also in the experience that uh, your clients or partners or anyone that really comes in contact with your firm has so that it, it creates a uh, it, it creates a uniform perception about you and you've worked in other industries as well how, how are we doing as architects <laughs> uh, if I if I if I'm gonna be perfectly honest um, you're not doing well uh, oh. I think you know I, I don't you think that comes as a I don't think that comes as a surprise. Um, what encourages me and why, why I decided to focus on architects is that there are a lot of people like you, like uh, uh, Jeff Eccles is a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people out there who are talking about this now in the industry. And I think it's it's a discussion that, you know, maybe it's been happening all, all along, but people haven't really been paying attention. And I think people are starting to pay more attention to it now. And uh, that's, that's encouraging. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news uh, is that most of, the, most of the websites we looked at, and we've looked at over 550 of them now over the last couple of years, most of them don't do a good job of representing the firm in, in a positive way. And, not, and I don't mean that, like, it, it's not that there, it's a negative way. It's just that it's a kind of bland, uh, maybe uh, what you see everywhere else is kind of repeated over and over again. And so I think when we talk about branding, especially in the AEC industry, when we talk about it with architects, we're talking about like, like how can you find your own voice? How can you tell your own story in a way that's unique to you and isn't just what everybody else does? And, and I will say this, I, you know, looking at all these firm websites, sometimes you look at them and you're like, wait a minute, I've seen this before, or I've read this before. And, and you know, when, you, when that starts to happen over and over again, you really get the sense that some architects don't really take their brand seriously, at least not online. And so you wonder if some of them are just looking at, you know, whoever, maybe it's Gensler, or, uh, uh, you know, HOK or something like that. And they're, they're going, well, let's try to do what they do. And replication is not branding. Um, you know, it, it, you know, it might be flattering to some of those firms, but, uh, uh, if you're trying to follow their lead, but if you're not, if you're not out there with your own message, your own, uh, story, uh, in your own voice, uh, that's really, it, it, you're not doing yourself any favors to stand out and be, be different. So Brian, let's say I'm a, I'm an architecture firm owner and our firm is busy. I mean, we just yeah. have more work than we can handle. The projects coming in left and right, and yep. you know, our pro our problem is not getting more work. Why yeah. would we even want to spend any of our valuable time, resources, energy on a branding exercise? 
or would we? Well, that's a good question. I mean, um, maybe maybe you've already you know found the magic formula and you've got a very unique brand already, but you, you just don't know it, right? Um, or uh, or you know, if you are busy, like you say, and uh, you, you know you, you're just too busy to think about this. Uh, what I would challenge you to do is to think about like, okay, are you getting the kind of projects you really want, right? Now, I know a lot of architects who are busy, but if you really ask them, are you doing the work you really want to do? Most of them will tell you, no. They'll tell you, no, we get, we kind of have to take what we get. We get a lot of it, but it's, it's not the stuff that we really want to do. And so if what you're doing isn't aligning with what you want or your goals as a firm, that's a really good reason to take a look at your brand because you're, the brand that you may be putting out or the perception that people may have of you is that you're you're cheap or you're fast or uh, you're willing to kind of uh, you know go with the flow and and do what the client wants or whatever right or whatever it may be um, changing your brand. Uh, controlling that perception or trying to control that perception can steer you towards a better quality of client, a better uh, level of client in terms of revenue. Um, there's a lot of advantages and a lot of reasons why you would want to rebrand. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And so when you talk about, so you made this great distinction between brand and branding. For yeah. you, what are the elements of branding in terms of things we can control? How do you how do you explain yeah. that and divide that up? So I think it's really important for uh, for firms uh, for everybody in the firm really to understand what the purpose of the firm is, what the promise of the firm is, and what the position of the firm is. So what do I mean by those three P's? Uh, these are the three core elements of branding what we are or of the brand if you want to put it that way the purpose is why we're actually doing this why are we actually in business what what mission are we trying to serve uh um how you know what is our what is our goal as a firm right what is our purpose as a firm that you know simon sinek talks about uh, finding your why and and that's what we're really talking about when we talk about the purpose uh, when it comes to the promise, that's the experience we want our clients, our partners, anybody that interacts with us to have, right? So, uh, if it, if you know, if our core value is integrity, then that that should be how we treat everybody. Uh, just as an example, the position is what makes us different or unique, right? And that might rest in your experience, your expertise, or the talent that you have, but being clear about that and being, and, and making sure that that's known, right? Not, not hiding it behind, uh, you know, a, a resume bio or something like that. Being clear about what makes your team unique and what makes your firm different is really important because we all have so many choices. If we go on Google and we search for an architect near me, we're going to get a lot of different uh, options. So if, we, if we're going through that, we wanna see something that resonates with us and um, uh, that position uh, trying to create differentiation between you and the other firms out there is really important in that respect. Um, there's another aspect of branding, what we call the personality, and that's really our tone of voice, right? There's, uh, there's a philosophy about uh, what, what's called brand archetypes and each archetype kind of defines a different personality. Uh, there's personalities like the hero brands. There's personalities like the lover brands, right? Um, uh, which I think I think that's like a Tiffany's brand or something like that. Um, most of the architects that we've worked with fall into two categories: either the creator brand uh, archetype or the uh, sage uh, brand archetype. So I, I like to call the sage the Yoda brand. So it's it's kind of like the the wise guide who is is helping you along this journey. The creator is a little bit more fun, more maybe more energetic, and they're they're trying to kind of make it fun and and look at all the uh, pers all the possibilities, uh, explore ideas, etc. It doesn't mean there can't be overlap in these, and you can't be a little bit of both. But usually, firms kind of fall in one of these categories in terms of their own self perception, 
And once you, once you can identify an archetype like that for your firm, then that gives you some clues about how you should be talking, right? If you're a Sage brand, you want to, you want to use language that kind of focuses on expertise and experience. And, and we have a plan and a process. If you're more of a creator brand, you're going to talk about the fun, the, the experience that people are going to have and how they're going to enjoy that discovery process and the imagining all the possibilities. So, um, so that's really what, when we talk about brand, it's, it's about getting clarity around these things so that we can communicate them better, not only to, uh, potential clients, but also to our employees and making sure that everybody's on the same page and, and understanding where we're going and, and what we should be saying and doing, uh, uh to get there. If an architecture firm wants to engage a branding consultant, marketing consultant to work on the branding, what are the questions they should be asking? How do they, how do they find the right fit for the job? I think that's a good question. And, um, one of the, uh, you know, I, th I think there's some of the basic questions like, uh, you know, have you worked with architects before? I mean, architects, they're not your average client, uh, from my perspective, you know, I've been working with them now for a few years. Um, they're, they can be a little bit different than other clients, you know, professional services, uh, firms in general, they, you know, they have, uh, expertise. They, they might have a, a, a diverse range of expertise within their, within their firm. And so if you're going to work with a, a branding firm, you want to, you want to kind of make sure that they kind of at least have an idea about how you work and, and understand how you are kind of constructed as a firm, you know, what the different layers are, maybe some of the language that you might use. So uh, basic previous experience would be a good starting point. But, uh, you know, I, I think also you should make sure that they kind of align with the things that you value too. Like, uh, do they have the same outlook in terms of uh, values and, and, uh, and the things that they find important? Um, I always tell people, <laughs> look at references, talk to people who have worked with them before. How do, how were they treating them? Uh, what was the process like? Was it rushed and, and hurried? Was, were things done last minute or, or was there a clear plan and process? One of the reasons that we started working with architects, uh, we, we started, uh, with our first architect that we worked with we went through a branding process. We, we did a, a branding process. They, they rebranded. And then uh, we went through web design and um, also did co content marketing for them. And what we learned through that process is that we had very similar ideas of, of, of about how to approach a project. Um, we did, you know, there was things that we did at the initial stages of the project um, uh, to under, better understand who they were and, and how they worked and who their clients were. Uh, that carried through to a very clear plan of how we were going to reach our goals or their goals. And I think just in understanding that they had, we had this synergistic kind of approach and thinking about how to, how to, uh, how to do a project. It, it get, that's, that's where we started having ideas about, well, maybe we should be working with more architects. So I think you want to you want to look at a branding or marketing firm and you want to you want to kind of feel them out and say, you know, are they working in a way that would we would feel comfortable working too? That's an important part of it because you're going to be working together a lot and you want to make sure that you're comfortable with their process. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. So you guys have been doing this with architects for a, a couple of years and you, you mentioned some key distinctions. What are some of the key distinctions that you find uh, that's different working with architects versus some of the other business owners out there? Well, I mean, if I'm honest, I think, um, you know, what I appreciate about ar architects is that they all are pretty bright people. Um, they're very well thought out and thorough. Um, which is a good thing, and, and that's something I actually appreciate, right? Um, you mentioned it, a lot of architects are busy. That can be a downside to working with architects. So you have to you have to be able to build a process that they can digest and fit into their schedule along with all the other things that they're doing. So we work very hard at, at being able to do that, getting the information that we need in, in short bursts rather than 
trying to, you know, have five hour meetings that, you know, everybody's like, you know, God, can we get out of here? I got to get some work done. So, um, I think, uh, for us, uh, a lot of the firms that we've worked with, uh, it's been a really great experience because, um, architects are all about relationships and that's always been a core tenet of ours is that we, we don't want to have our clients at arm's length. We will actually want to be involved with them. We want to be partners and collaborators with them. And for us, that's been a really, uh, one of the best outcomes is that a lot of our, a lot of our clients have actually become good friends of ours on a personal level, which is, that's pretty cool if you think about it, right? I, we got into this to, to, you know, obviously make a living and stuff like that, but we've also gotten some really great relationships out of it. And that's been a, that's been a really rewarding part of it. Brian, when it comes to marketing for architects, what are the things that architects should be looking at? Well, there's, I think there's three main things that we focus on and, and we think are important for architects. Number one is uh, what we what we call visibility. So um, uh, there's there's three parts. There's visibility, there's influence, and then there's network. The visibility part is about making sure that you have, uh, in in specific terms, it's about having a good web presence. And but when I mean web presence, I mean you should have a good website. But what are the other touch points on the internet that people can find you? There's things like your Google My Business page, your LinkedIn page, your um, your profiles on social media. All those things should be consistent. They should be reflective of your brand. They should be presenting you in a consistent and similar way. So that visibility part is really important. Um, the next part is the influence part. So how are you communicating your value? How are you positioning yourself? And I know architects don't like to use this word, but how are you positioning you, yourself as an expert? And I like to say, don't be an expert, show your expertise. So that's how I get around that. But it really is about like, you know, how, how are you talking about the things that you're really good at, right? And how are you sharing that information? So uh, using that, and, and we, we often talk about content marketing in this regard, uh, communicating your value through the content that you're creating, whether it's on your social media, whether it's a blog, whether it's video, uh, podcasting like you do. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can communicate your value and build your influence. And what you really want to do is you want to make sure that you're, you're focusing on building influence uh, that positions your expertise, your experience, your talent in your firm uh, in a way that that's, that's you know, if, it, if it's visible, if it's clear that what you do and how you do it and how you bring value, uh, that's that's a really good fit. And the third thing is the network that you're building. You know, who are you connecting with? I know a lot of architects. We've talked to a lot of architects, and I say, well, how do you find clients? Well, it's word of mouth. It's referral, and and that's great. That's never going to change, and I wouldn't want to change that. But there are ways to magnify that or uh, amplify that. Uh, especially nowadays, right? We use LinkedIn a lot. I, I, I interface with people on LinkedIn every day. And it's, it's taking that one-to-one face-to-face networking and expanding it. We did this for a client. We started using network uh, uh, LinkedIn to build a network. He likes to do a lot of nonprofit work. And so we ran a campaign where we basically were using LinkedIn to reach out to uh, uh, executive directors of nonprofit groups in in uh, in Florida, where he's based. Uh, within two weeks, he had a lead on a six million dollar project. And again, we were taking the visibility, the influence, and now the specific networking that we were doing for him. And we're tying all, all that together. He had a good website. He had a good uh, 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 LinkedIn page. So that was the visibility part. We were talking about things that uh, uh, kind of positioned him as an expert for uh, nonprofits. And then we were actually directly uh, doing outreach for him on his behalf to the types of clients he wanted to work with. 
And when we put all that together, we had some great results and we're continuing to get great results for him uh, doing those kind of campaigns. What are three types of content marketing that you think architects should focus on if, if they want to do that, Brian? Well, I'm a big fan of blogging. Um, I think that's, uh, for me, that's one of the easier uh, things to do. Um, but I think, I think it's better to back up, right? We talked about minimizing time. What I like to do with my clients um, is what I call multi-purpose content generation. So uh, some people call it a pulse engine, other people call it something else. We call it multi-purpose content generation. So what I do with my clients is I work with them to define, okay, what are the topics that you want to talk about? What are the topics that you want to be known as an expert about, right? And we, we create a list of kind of the topics that they want to talk about. And then we break those out into different questions that their clients or potential clients might have. And then what I do on a monthly basis is I spend about an hour with them uh, once a month where I do an interview with them like, like we are doing right now, uh, just on Zoom. I record it. Uh, I record what they say, exactly what they say. I've got the video clips, the audio clips, everything. And then uh, my content writer will take that interview and turn that into a blog article. But because we have all this other media, we can also turn that into social media posts. Uh, we can turn it, you know, we take those little clips of the great things that they say and turn that into a little uh, social media post with, you know, some, some graphics or video. And so by taking that one hour of time with them each month and getting their insights and ideas and opinions about this thing that they, they want to talk about, we're able to create a, a blog article. We're able to create, usually we'll, out of that one, art, uh, one interview, we'll get about 12 to 15 social media posts. And, and so when you talk about the channels they should be on, well, number one, your, your website is the most important thing. The second for me is having a blog where you can talk about these things. Uh, there's other value to that because you you get found in Google for that information that you're sharing because it's answering the questions that your potential clients have. And then uh, you can also use that on social media. Now, for me, social media, uh, for architects, uh, I, I, I say this all the time, LinkedIn is the number one platform. I don't care if you think Instagram is going to be the hit for you. Uh, the thing about Instagram and most other platforms is that you have to build an audience. With LinkedIn, you do not have to build an audience. You just have to connect with the people that you want to connect with. And that's a big differentiation. Ultimately, what you want to do with all of these things is you want to get people to sign up for your email list so that you can send them a regular communication through your email. And that's the third component of what, what I would call that multi-purpose um, approach. You got your blog, you got your social media posts, and then you've got your email that you're sending out at least once a month, talking about the things that are going on or the insights that you have and sharing that information with those potential uh, future clients. And Brian, where do you see all of this headed when we talk about the conversation of marketing and architecture firm messaging, positioning, brand, yeah. communications. Where's, where's it headed, do you think? What are the trends that you're seeing? Well, I think there's a lot of exciting things going on right now. I'm seeing a lot, of, a lot more people looking at video as a, as a way to communicate uh, about what they do and share their expertise. I've seen a lot more uh, podcasts coming on uh, recently. Uh, and, and let's be clear. These people are, are the, like, that's the influencer crowd, right? I consider you an influencer, right? So these aren't the day-to-day -day people, but what, what is happening is more and more of these people are adopting these new technologies. Uh, Clubhouse is a new one too, the, the audio platform. Yesterday, there was a, a very uh, lengthy discussion about TikTok and how architects can stand out on TikTok that I, uh, I was involved in. And... Um, 
I think all of these things are just showing architects that there's other ways to get out there and share their messages, share their expertise, share their work. And um, as a result, I think we're going to see more and more people feeling comfortable about doing that. And, and that's where I kind of see things maybe evolving is that we're going to see more people picking this up. I, I'm, I've seen, you know, I have a, I have a friend who is actually doing podcasts for larger firms. Like he's actually like, he's, he's developing that content for them. And, uh, you know, we might see that start to trickle down into maybe some of the more le- medium sized firms. I don't know if the smaller firms will adopt that, but they may try to do it themselves. Um, but yeah, that's where I, I, I see that, you know, there's a slow trajectory towards adopting some of these things. And I, that encourages me. <laughs> I'm glad to see that. So that, that's one direction. Yeah. Okay. Well, Brian, Thanks for joining us today. Great conversation about marketing, about branding. Now you guys specialize in, you know, you've worked with a lot of architecture firms and, uh, you know, their web presence, everything around that. Where can people go to find out more about you, what you guys do? Yeah, sure. Um, just visit us at www.archmark, it's A-R-C-H-M-A-R-K dot C-O, so archmark.co. That's our website. That's where you'll find us. Um, uh, if you're if you're listening to this, uh, I encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn. I share a lot of content on LinkedIn as well, um, and you can find me on LinkedIn by searching in the search LinkedIn search for Brilliant Brian, and my name is spelled B R Y O N. Uh, it is not Byron. It is Brian. But uh, Brilliant Brian. That's how you can find me on LinkedIn. Excellent. Thanks, Brian. Great having you on. Absolutely. We'll make sure thank those make for, it into the show notes. Yeah, thank you for inviting me, and I'm really pleased to be here again. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. Com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture, a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.